offered a summer residency this year to two artists. Um, the first one is Izzy Catalano. She started ceramics in the fall of 2021 at Ventura College and uh, worked in the summer with Clay Zen and Wynn Matthews. And um, we're going to hear from her first. So she'll present and talk about her work. Hello. So everybody please mute themselves. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Um, can everyone see this? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so like Luann said, I was in Ojai with Wynn this summer. Um, I'd had about six months of experience at Ventura College. So this residency, pro this summer was really an opportunity for me to grow and, and learn from Wynn. Um, so what we did is really um, focus on basics and fundamentals and um, making sure that I had um, the groundwork to become um, a well-rounded and better potter. Um, so first I'd like to say, um, I'm so grateful to have had this opportunity. Um, I was able to focus on um, gaining these skills um, to later become a well-rounded potter. I'm still um, practicing and, and learning as I go. Um, and it was really incredible to be able to use the studio space at Clayson and I'll always um, value that. Um, um, so the first two weeks were um, just throwing one pound cylinders and getting used to um, getting consistent walls. Um, these at first, I'd say the first two or three days, um, you know, I'd, I'd throw it and then when would say, okay, now cut it down the middle. And it was always kind of um, heartbreaking if I was super proud of it and it was like, all right, I'll get rid of it. Um, but once we were comfortable with um, consistency, they were turned into these planters. Um, I experimented with a few of them. I tried carving different patterns. Um, it was um, always exciting to see. I never really had a, an idea before I started carving into them, but um, seeing them at the end was all was you know exciting and and um, I. I, I really want to experiment more with um, carving and, and patterns. Um, and this is just that. Um, so that was, you know, like it says, sped up trimming of one of the first cylinders um, with a more beaded rim. I don't think that that was turned into a planter. I'm sure that that was more of like a pencil holder or something of the sort. Um, after, you know, getting comfortable with throwing these cylinders and adding a little bit more shape to them, um, we added handles and that was kind of um intimidating in a way because there's a lot that can it's it's disappointing when it doesn't turn out exactly how you want um but i we threw them off i mean pulled them off the form and that was really um it was a, it was a pretty good day i'd say um doing something that i had um never done so early on um and 
these were just some designs that I did for two mugs. Um, I used underglaze and um, carved the outline of them out um, of cowboy hats, horseshoes and a boot and the handle said howdy on it. Um, I did the handle with um, some inlay on it um, with, I used underglaze in this instance, um, but I was really happy with how they turned out. I think I'd like to experiment more with something that I'm not that familiar with yet. This was another instance where um, I used, I experimented with underglaze. This was um, more um, me carving out a design and then filling it with, I used underglaze, which in the future I'd probably use colored slip, um, but I would, I painted the mug with that base color of green. Um, we put wax over that and sketched out um, the rose with the back of a paintbrush um, and carved over that and um, packed the underglaze in um, to fill the outline in and wiped the excess away with a sponge. I laid the wax down to kind of avoid messing up the first layer of paint. Um, I wasn't fully successful in that because a little bit of it did come up. Um, but um, I don't have anything to follow about. Um, these were some more cups that I made towards the end of this actually, um, with the intention to try something that I hadn't done before in terms of design. I wasn't sure if I was gonna do that with glaze or um, underglaze or sgraffito. Um, but from Ventura College, we had some silk screens that I had never had the chance to use. Um, and I'm a fan of Cary Grant. So I used his image on these black, red, and um, blue. And there were a few, um, there was some trial and error with this just because I, I wasn't familiar with how much underglaze to pack on to get a clear image. Um, but I think that practicing over and over again, wiping off the underglaze to get the finished result um, was a learning curve for me. Um, and those two videos were, were of me peeling back the screen, um, the silk screen and, and his image being there. Our next step was, or the next um, form that I was taught were bowls. I had very limited experience. I'd say I probably had only done about six before then and they weren't that great. So, um, and this video is, is by no means the steadiest throwing of a bowl, um, but I really come to enjoy throwing bowls. I say it's probably the first warm up that I do when I sit at the wheel. Um, and I'll just let the video play. Um, so on the left, the top image, um, we were trying out some um, different rims. So that one's, you know, more flattened out and the bottom one is a more um, accentuated beaded rim. Um, and I, the 
those ones are show up later. But. Um, and also prior to this, I had never um, used porcelain because I had just heard people say like it's it's difficult to work with. But I had a pretty good experience um, with Nara porcelain. Um, so these are some of uh, the finished bowls. The one in the middle is the flattened out rim that was showed earlier that was shown earlier, um, and. I'll guess I'll point out a happy accident with the bowl on the left. Um, I usually wax the bottoms and some wax had dripped down the side and caused that sort of orange streak. Um, and I, I just think it looks really neat. There's more um, on the left. Those are, it's the same glaze on two different clay bodies. Um, and I'm always really interested to see how they'll look. I used Black Mountain um, and B-Mix for these two. Um, so. And Berry Bowls I think are super fun and um, I kind of with Wynn's help figured out a technique to kind of make sure that the holes aren't super sharp when you go through them um, to kind of um, soften them and I think that helps how the glaze sits as well. Um, and I had seen other people um, do marbling with their work and always thought it was just so incredible and beautiful. And I had some leftover B-Mix while I was using Black Mountain and got to try it out. And I, I was super excited the whole time um, just seeing how it trims, it's it's kind of like a surprise as you're doing it. Um, and then I have some of the finished pieces here. And if I were to do it again, I'd probably use Portland instead of to contrast. The next thing we tackled were was bellying out pots. Um, I had a very limited experience with um, throwing vases or anything that wasn't a bowl or cup or mug. Um, and over here to the left is when demoing that. Um, and then the right is my first attempt at um, filling out a vase. They're very, they're about a pound, pound and a half. Um, so not um, crazy huge. But I spent a good amount of time working on them. Um, the these ones were very, you know, narrow foot, wide shoulders, um, collared and neck. Um, but I I was super um, excited to take this on, um, and I still I also do these as kind of a warm up. They're you know about maybe five inches, but um, they're really neat.
I'm sorry for there being no music with that one. Um, and then the more I, I did those traditional shapes, I experimented with um, bellying out different things. I kind of didn't have, I didn't have much of an idea going into these. It was more just wherever things fell, wherever it went. Um, and I, um, I, with this, the, um, the small blue one that's more of a tradition, that's, you know, more of what you see. Um, that one I um, carved into that one. I laid down that blue color and carved a rose into it. Um, I didn't end up filling that um, with a color slip or um, any sort of glaze, which if I were to do this again, which I, I do want to attempt it again, um, I would change that about it. And these are some of the finished um, faces, they're all about five inches. Um, the one on the bottom, second from the left, um, I had um, poured a white, shiny, shiny white glaze over it and um, air sprayed a blue glaze over it. Um, and it kind of brought out these um, red tones, these green and purple tones in it. Um, and that's a more concentrated area of the vase. Um, and around it, it's more um, soft and speckled. And the last thing um, Wynne taught me was how to throw plates. Um, I, I don't know what it intimidated me about them from the beginning, but these were, this was the first time um, of me having a go at them. Um, and these are the um, finished plates. They're about, they were about two pounds when I um, threw them. So, um, and I'd really like to thank um, all of you guys for, for listening to me and um, for the, to the Ventura Potters Guild for allowing me this opportunity. And I'd also like to thank Wynn for all of your time and knowledge and, and patience that you, you gave me. And I couldn't um, do a presentation about my time in Ojai without including Sherman. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Izzy. Is there anybody that wants to ask Izzy questions about her experience? Okay, we're going to move on to Connor. So Connor Kelly was our second summer resident artist, and he started out his um, ceramics education at Moore Park College and then moved on to California State Channel Islands, which I'm assuming he's still at. Is that correct, Connor? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a senior there now. Oh, awesome. And um, he worked at the Clay Studio. He came up from wherever he is in Camarillo um, to the clay studio in Goleta and worked with Patrick Hall originally and then worked with Isaiah Porter. And um, yeah, like gonna see his work now. Hey, uh, can you see my screen? Can you guys see? You have to no. keep clicking, click on the uh, share or you, there's there's two clicks involved. Oh, okay. There should be a share screen. Share con and then screen. And, yeah, and you, I think you're hitting um, stop video. Or hit hit share, um, share uh, desktop. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. Hey. All right. All right. So I am a senior at Channel Islands right now. I did start my um, my ceramics experience at Moore Park in 2016. I was on and off uh, for a few years, and then I transferred in 2020, right when COVID hit, and I've been there 
ever since. So um, this is me as a few photos of me and my work. Um, the two middle ones were at Inseca this past year. That was my first time going there. And this is at the, oops, this was at the Ventura uh, Clay Show with uh, Channel Islands and Ventura College together. So that was a great first experience. And when you get to Clay Studio SB, it's in the hills in Goleta. The first thing I saw was this Blau, brand new Blau kiln. And uh, that got me really excited. Um, then you guys know about the Blau. It's like the Rolls Royce of kilns. And uh, then I saw the, the wall of test tiles. And uh, that got me even more excited. I've never been to a place like this. Um, never really been to a public studio. But uh, when the environment was really cool, meeting a lot of people. And my goals were to, you know, I have a little experience. So my goals were to just push myself to like the limit and try things I've never tried before you know, throw bigger, um, just kind of dial in everything and make my lids fit tighter. And um, so the first day I was there, I threw like five or six things. And uh, this is the first vase I glazed. And I love mixing glazes, um, one on top of another to see what the reaction is. Um, and I could tell that there was some potential here when I added a little bit of uh, glaze into that line. Um, so I'll, when I got that out of, I think this is an oxidation, they do oxidation and reduction firings, cone 10. Um, when I got that out, I got, I had some ideas. So this was my first piece that I got out of the kiln and uh, this was my second. Um, they have a few chinos there, which I enjoy chinos, especially when they're under another glaze. So if you can tell uh, there is a chino under there with, I just brushed on. Um, yeah, so these are kind of my getting to know the studio pieces. Um, I, I'm used to throwing at school and I'm comfortable there and this whole, this new place with nobody I knew was a whole new environment for me. So it took a little bit to get used to everything. Um, I got a little down on myself at first because things weren't happening the way that I wished they were, but, uh, I just kept pushing through. And I uh, started to get res some results like this, uh, which I really liked. Uh, Luann, I actually grabbed this combo off of Luann's Instagram. Luann was with me there a lot of those days. Um, and it was great having her there, talking with her, having Patrick there, helping me decide on what way to go with my work, because I, I've had trouble with that, uh, the direction I want to go. Um, I get sidetracked and do different things, but uh, yeah, I started to get some glaze results like this and uh, started to get pretty excited. Um, so this is my first piece that I did a lid with. I've, uh, I've had trouble with lids, I feel. Um, they always are loose or the, the gallery isn't thick enough where it could chip. So I started to kind of push myself and this is my favorite type of uh, lid where it like goes, there's like a shelf and it goes on top of it. Um, so this is a Chino that I kind of just splattered over the top of this or underneath this other glaze. and. Uh, not, not my favorite, but uh, I really like the kind of more earthy tones that it came out with. 
um, kind of reminds me of like an ancient pot. And uh, so I never did this this glaze combo again, but uh, I would I would like to revisit something like this. Um, and then, so if you remember that first vase I showed you, this is the same combo, the glaze combo. And uh, I kind of just push it to its limit. It is a really runny combo. So um, there was a few pieces that were some grinding involved, but um, I, was, I was happy that I figured this one out. Uh, and that's what I love about ceramics is, you know, testing, figuring stuff out, and then just going for it. Uh, so I, I was very pleased with uh, these three pieces that, that came out. Um, and I started to kind of push myself a little more and get some guidance from people about the lids um, and a, actually a different way to, to make them than I was before, like at least the gallery part. Uh, and I started to see some progress in it. Uh, this is another uh, lidded vessel that I'm happy with. Um, I'm happy with this one because this one, I kind of push myself to, to go like to try to make the thinnest pot I could. And uh, this is definitely like for the size is definitely the lightest of the, all the ones I made. Um, so each day I would, you know, it's like an hour drive up to Goleta. Um, and I went like probably two to three days a week. And uh, on the drive, I would, think about what what my plan was for the day because usually I spent like six or seven hours because I didn't want to drive all the way back but uh I I this day I planned to make the thinnest pot that I could and I'm I'm happy with how it came out uh yeah and then uh this is one of my more I feel like my like complete pieces like well-rounded piece that I've made um kind of reminds me of like a moon jar uh and I love this tomato glaze and the, the lid fits nice and I feel like this is the time and this is about halfway through probably of the summer that uh this was the time that I really started to see results and just being in the studio a lot and throwing a lot and messing up a lot and uh just really started to see the results and just which got me more excited to even be to be there more and I feel like I learn from things like this rather than a lot of people learn from mistakes I usually learn from the things I do right uh so when I figure out something that works I I just run with it um, this is another lidded pot that I did. This is with the Sperry Crawl, which I've never used before. Uh, the good thing about the clay studio is they, ha they have so much stuff that I've never even dreamed of using before. Um, so I tried to pick, pick and choose which, which stuff I would like to try. Um, and this is a Sperry Crawl that I actually refired this one. Uh, I added more of the the white crawling glaze, and uh, feel like it um, came out pretty good. And then, so this is I think a you know two months in maybe or around halfway. I wanted to start throwing, you know, bigger stuff. Um, I've always had trouble throwing big stuff with a one piece of clay. So here's me uh, doing a sectional piece, like throwing two bowls and uh, attaching them together and then throwing a lid after that. Um, so this was uh, another goal I wanted to, to complete is uh, trying these sectional pieces. And I feel like you just gotta do these a lot and uh, 
I definitely re reclaimed a lot of clay uh, trying these out. And, uh, but I just kept pushing and this one I'm happy with. Uh, it's definitely different than my normal stuff with the glaze application. It's like a um, matte black, but then I like rub my fingers over it and kind of let the clay get exposed through it. Uh, so just trying new things and uh, this one's pretty big. Um, and then I wanted to, I never really used a uh, slip before. So this is a sectional piece that I wasn't happy with when I threw it. And so I just added a bunch of slip and it kind of uh, won me over when I, when I added the slip. Uh, definitely have been doing that a lot recently in my work. So um, I'm glad that I did started it here and uh, definitely got the, the slip um, train rolling. And uh, yeah. And then I uh, kind of in the, they have a gallery there and they had a show and there was a lot of wall pieces, um, like big plates that you put on the wall. It's kind of like a painting. So I threw like this big plate platter bowl thing. And then I kind of just went Jackson Pollock with it and just added a bunch of different colored slips. Um, kind of like an abstract painting. I, I enjoy abstract pain. Uh, so this is definitely right up my alley. Um, so I was definitely happy with how this guy turned out. Uh, and here's some more uh, bowl, bigger bowl plates. Never made anything the, this big before, uh, as in like a bowl. Um, so definitely pushing myself, throwing with a lot of clay and uh, loved how this, uh, with the red clay, this is an oatmeal glaze. Uh, never used that one before, but uh, super happy with the textures and how the iron came through. Um, definitely was new for me and uh, had some fun with that one. And then here's just some mugs. I. Uh, through. I've always had trouble with handles, um, trying to match the handle to the form. Uh, so these are some like renditions of some diner mugs, um, just like some classic diner mugs with different glazes and different handles. Um, while I'm not throwing the bigger stuff, I like to throw you know a few mugs to warm up or in between, because um, I feel like every potter should uh, be able to throw some mugs. Um, and then this is a vase I did, which I'm really happy with this one. Um, I wish I would have got a nice picture in the photo booth that they have there, but uh, this is a, a piece that I did towards the end, like almost at the very end. And I actually picked it up like a month later after the residency ended. But uh, it's just like a bottleneck vase with a dip diagonally uh, with two different glazes. And I really enjoy the hard line or, and then like the, the soft line. And uh, I don't know, it's just such a simple piece, but I feel like I really uh, captured this one. And then, yeah, so this is towards the end of my, uh, my stay there at, uh, the clay studio and I just was having fun and throwing pots and literally throwing them on on a on a uh, the table and like smushing them and kind of just testing the fluidity of the clay and how much it would hold up uh, and I started doing these things and uh, I really love them people seem to like them uh, definitely want to explore this more um, kind of like a melting pot. Um, and then, yeah, so I uh, never really experienced it with texture before I got here. I was kind of like a smooth vase kind of guy. Um, 
but I feel like the texture that you put on a pot really like can be like a signature or bring out the like it just makes the it makes it so much more interesting to me um so I started doing I, I cut up a credit card and uh, started doing this texture with it while it was still on the wheel and uh, just having fun with it I really um found out that I like uh like the the like the really tight smooth lines and then the, the rough texture and how they complement each other uh and so I started uh experimenting and uh the I threw the these are probably my favorite pieces that I threw for the whole summer um and I guess everything came out how I wanted them to and uh kept them in greenware or I mean in bisqueware for a little bit I was kind of scared because I really enjoyed the piece I was kind of scared to glaze them because I know how that can go I you can either make it or break it so I uh, spent a lot of time glazing actually and uh, spent my time and made sure everything was right and um, these are probably two of my favorite pieces that I made the whole the whole time and this is the first one uh this i just love how the the black complements like pops out the the woo blue and uh really like felt really proud of this one um the texture's really cool rough and smooth together never really seen anything like this um and then this is the smaller one and uh this is the bigger one uh, this is probably my favorite piece that I made the whole time and uh, just really proud of this one and uh, really push the limits on how flat I could get the top and you know clay isn't really supposed to do that at you know 2400 degrees it's not supposed to stay flat like that but for some reason it stayed flat and the, the lid the, the lid fits tight and uh just just proud of this one um so mm, believe that's it and i just yeah i wanted to say thank you to you guys would have never had the opportunity to uh to grow as much as i did throughout the summer if it wasn't for you guys um so really appreciate it and uh feel like i took full advantage of what you guys were offering to me so thank you all right thank you connor that was um both of you did a great job this the whole summer and worked really hard, I know, and um, you both gave really good presentations, so thank you for that. And um, uh, the Potter, the Ventura County Potters Guild is going to give you a membership from today through the end of December 2023, so that's cool. Anyway, um, thanks, and uh, back to you, Stacy. All righty, well... I just want to say one more time that providing these residencies is one of my favorite things that we do. And I want to thank everybody that was involved, Luann and Wynn and the folks at the Clay Studio, and especially Connor and Izzy. This really makes me proud to be a member of the guild. You guys are great and keep it, keep it, keep it hot. And um, we were going to have breakout groups on a number of important topics that we want to hear from you about, about the board, about the jury process, about the Big Sky Project, and about oh, one more thing. Um, but it's late. So what we're going to do is we're going to postpone that to next month's meeting. And that maybe gives us a little more time to have a more integrated conversation with you guys and get more of your thoughts. And we'll send out uh, maybe the topics in advance. We did this time too, but we might add a couple or think it through a little bit more. And so that we can really have a good discussion to get feedback from you all um, for going forward. And with that, unless anybody has any questions or any final things to say, I will bid you all a good night. Thank you for coming. Thank you for voting. And we're a great group of folks. We get a lot done.
Good night. Fabulous.